All right. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another month in Vertex Idol Alliance. It is January 2021 officially. We have started a new year. It's an exciting new year because we've actually turned a profit. We've, uh, you know, we were, we were losing about a, you know, a thousand uh, a month. And then we got it down to just a couple months ago. We only lost $2. And then we actually started turning a profit. Uh, at least that's here because I believe just how the spillover happens for the Midwest is uh, generally very nice. Midwest has a lot of spillover into a lot of places. Uh, not so much for Idle Pro. Uh, despite the fact that it is. That, that where we are based out of is the biggest city in the country. Um, spillover doesn't go very far. <laughs> As you can see, it hits two places. And uh, it's not the greatest, but, you know, uh, we'll work on it. So we still get, we still, we're still quite a bit in debt here. And we're still losing uh, a, a good chunk of change. It's less chunk of change than it used to be, but it doesn't help the fact that a lot of the women, as you can see, we haven't really signed on a bunch of new women, or at least not expensive ones, but our uh, worker cost has pretty much doubled, uh, mostly due to the fact of uh, a lot of them getting popular enough that they, they're no longer worth 20 bucks a pop, but 80. Some of them even worth like uh, more 200. <laughs> How long did it take me to just start money? Yeah, I just started making money. And that's just on one of the companies. The other one still isn't making money. Uh, but this one's getting around to it. <clears throat> uh, I posted, when I posted this up, I posted up the match card for uh, our big event to start off the year called uh, Undeniable. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and book that match we were still able to keep um we we're still able to keep saturday week two uh i don't know how much better that's gonna you know how much better that's gonna go yeah both companies started with like five thousand which is like in real in reality that's like the bare minimum you should probably start with if you're starting literally a uh and that's 5,000 after you get the license in the ring. So, yeah, even at that point, like 5,000 would probably be the minimum that you would want just to just to have it around. Uh, so we can pre-book these matches here. We can pre-book our main event. AR oh, you know what I need to do? I realize there's not... Uh, oh boy. There's not really like uh, everything everything that you would consider like no disqualification or street fight or hardcore or extreme rules or whatever you'd want to call it. Uh, I think basically just falls under the basic 1v1 hardcore. So that's just what we're going to have to call it. But I still call it a street fight. So let's see. Just like that. <clears throat> there we go. How long do I think they can go? 86 and 78. So, you know what? We could probably go 23. Oh, right. No. I should probably put that belt on the line. There we go. <clears throat> you ever going to do a death match? Well, I'm certainly not big enough to get anyone to do anything close to that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we have, if I go here, 1v1 must be default. We need cage classic because... If I'm running, if I'm running uh, my own promotion, I am a bigger fan of running the more traditional steel cage match, where you don't escape; you have to win by pinfall or submission. 
73 is not the greatest. 69 is even less. So we can probably go 18. We'll see how that goes. So steel cage match for that. There we go. Uh, JJ Garrett's open challenge. We'll just leave that. I mean, I guess I could do a, a pre-book angle, but I'm not going to do that. And let's see. You're doing here. I'm going to move this back to where it was. And we'll do uh, Mata Abdel Hamid, Tim Dantz. There we go. And let's see, 78. And 77. And eh, we could probably go. We can probably go 18 there as well. All right. That that translates to probably what 65 about 65 minutes right there between the three matches. That's pretty good. That's not all we're doing. So that's good. Hey Papa John's how's it going? Um I guess I could actually I didn't make a thing for it, but I guess I could actually pre-book the match here. Let me do Flip Forever and Neon Ninjas. And they're just going to do eh, probably about 13, 13, something like that. Stamina wise, they should all be pretty, pretty okay. Uh, but since it's basically, it's kind of an opening match. They're really just out there to just kind of, they're really just kind of, uh, just kind of out there to do a basic match. Here we go. There's more to it beyond that. All right. So I believe we have all of that. I think at some point I need to upgrade my, even if I do rapid, 250 a week for 10% progress. That's not too bad. I'll have to think about that, but I, what I mostly need to think about the fact is I'm probably going to just start giving money. I'm probably going to start throwing some of my money over at uh, at uh, Idle Pro here soon, and just fund them, fund them a little bit until they really start until uh, they start turning a profit. This is going to be the one that's going to be interesting because I've had week and a half, two weeks to book this, and I haven't come up with anything. Uh, but I do need, we had title match, some other matches coming out here. I'm thinking we need a number one contenders match to determine the next challenger. So I'm thinking we could do Mirai, Honori Hana. Uh, we could put Himika. And I might do May again. We'll see. We'll say that. Yeah, so we could probably do another four-way. We'll go ahead and do that. Four-corner elimination. All right, let's see if I can remember. May, Narihana, Imika. Shit, who was the other one? Uh, Mirai. There we go. Uh, I feel like it's not going to go too hot because, uh, <laughs> Mirai's what, how good does she do in Tokyo Joshi pro? She does 31s cause she does like 
Yeah, twenty fours for us. Although we have a slightly different. Um, so she does lower. Well, she does upper twenties, lower thirties, and she pretty much stays in upper twenties for us. Maybe even mid twenties. We'll see. That's all right. We got May in there. We got Himika in there. I feel like could probably carry this. I think Honori Hana could probably carry it too, right? Uh, she's got a 41. I'll do that. <clears throat> uh, do that. Da, 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 da. Four corner. Uh, survival. Oops. And then, oh my goodness. Number one contendership. Uh, ah! I knew it. There was too much, there was too many names and everything else going on. There we go. How long? I see an 81. That's good. 68's not great. That immediately tops it at probably about 19 minutes at the very most. 70 and 74. So we'll go 19. How about that? It's all right. It's a Joshi promotion. They don't need to have long shows. <laughs> we don't really need to go much longer than like 110 minutes or so. As long as you give them basically a two-hour show. All right. So we've got the main up. What am I going to do for beyond that? Uh, they weren't happy with the card. Card coming out. Do nothing. Uh, Marika... I think we could do what if we did a match where Camille is going to try to convince I would say Marika to join in with her and Mirai and oh lord Let's see. I could give her... I could give her... Notica and Yuki, but how many of those matches have I put up already? <laughs> Bakuretsu, 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 Bakuretsu. Yuki. All right. Maybe someone other than either Yuki Aino or Nodoka Tenma might be a good idea. You li no, this is this is live. <laughs> this is live. I just told you I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch your videos. And you're also getting real real like full of piss and vinegar because I don't immediately acknowledge you. Let's see. Koto. He's not responded to chat. No, I don't respond to horse shit. This is what I don't respond to. Uh, I want to give her something other than... I want to give her something other than just... What's Rin been doing? Let me see this. Uh, Miyako Matsumoto Rin Katakura. Let me see. What was the... Uh... All I do is make you proud with what? <laughs> uh... See, I'm having a hard time now because here's the thing. I didn't pre-book any of this and usually I take my time and try to figure out the cards beforehand but this is what happens when I'm sitting here 
and I have to sit here and think about think about what I'm actually gonna what I'm actually gonna do beforehand. Oh yeah, I redid a lot of the pictures because a lot of them were outdated or just not great. Like, uh, where was it? Mirai's was outdated because that's probably a year old plus. Now she's got much longer hair. Marika's is like almost two years old now. So, yeah. Uh, f oh, damn it. Kari Harna. Non. I could give. What if I did Harna? And I gave her. What's her matches been? Who she who she been around? Yan Hanan, Miyako. Alright. I haven't seen her with Rin Katakura yet, so we'll do that. Not gonna go very long, because Marika's probably the weakest of the wrestlers here. Eh, 13, I guess. Put that there. Uh, okay, so we got a four-way. We got a tag team. Lord, I don't know what else I'm going to do, honestly. You know what? I'm going to wait until I get to the booking day, because then I can start excluding people who are already booked. And then I don't have to look over the same people. A bunch of times as I'm trying to book them. So I think that's what I'll do. I should throw some of my money from... Uh, throw some of my money from Vertigo to... Um, to Idol Pro as well. Oh, big shows out of the WWE. Oh, Oka's back. Not a, not a lot going on there. Okay, before I do that, how much money... Well, they're like 2000 in debt. How much money does do I have here? 1000 So how about... Relationship, negotiate, cash boost. Go ahead and send 1000 over that way. There we go. All right, so we're not as in debt. This is probably going to be the first few years. This, at least the first couple years probably is going to be. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to funnel a ton of money into this, but at least I got one promotion that makes money, and I can funnel it into another one. Hey, Dinky. Yeah, this is TEW. I can't, I can't remember if you were here for my 1920 playthrough. Think you were, but this is my uh, double local to global. Mm. Um, Dory Funk Jr. to retire. I was like, yeah, this man's in his seventies. How is he not already retired? Santana, um, Jesse Goddard's, he's more of a regular wrestler instead of an entertainer. Big Swall is now a regular wrestler, oh, oh, now she's, okay, become more of an entertainer. Uh, alright, so do that. Oh, right. You'll probably see this because I picked I picked up a few people, so we'll just sign that. Because I got some people coming for our big event here in a little over a week. This is like that, yes. It's the same game. It's just a completely different database, and of course, more modern day. This is actual modern modern day uh, real life wrestlers. Let's see here. Nakamura's back. Da, da, da. Happy Motel. What a 
What a name. Zero one disbands. Someone bailed on zero one. Well, they're about ready to. They're about ready to go. Well, I don't think they're completely bankrupt, but Molina's retiring. Shotzi staying with WWE. Alpha Females retiring. Lady Apache's retiring. Okay. All right. Nothing going on there. Sign the Heidenreich or Rodney Mack. Jesus Christ. I've got ideas. I have. I, I had an idea in my head. Because uh, I think I was talking the last time I was doing this about um, certain, certain guys that... Uh, certain characters I wanted played, and I think I have I think I have ideas for that. So, uh, Will Osprey won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship from Naito at Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> oh my God! Do you know Twitter would fucking explode if Will Osprey won the heavyweight title at Wrestle Kingdom? Twitter would just have a nuclear meltdown. And they held their Shinjuku face show. Well, they usually on the same day hold the uh Tokyo Joshi Pro usually holds the their um their big Crockwin Hall show that same day, but I wonder if someone else got that. Uh Rika Tatsumi won the International Princess Championship. Simon Gotch won something in MLW. Seth Rollins and Joey Janela argue on social media. So that's good. Final guy to sign. There we go. <laughs> Twitter would have just an insane meltdown <sighs> I'm trying to be a little more in it to win it I didn't actually have to go to work today usually I, I am uh, usually I work holidays I decided not to work this holiday I was going to, but after the, uh, after the, after having to be quarantined for like almost two weeks, I was just done. <laughs> I was like, I'll figure out, uh, well, I'll figure it out later. Like getting in there. TJP won the Impact X Division title. Ember Moon set to sign a contract to stay. Desmond Xavier has a blown eardrum, but that's fine. He'll be back by next week. Mm -mm. <sighs> you know, I think, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that, ooh, this is how old I'm getting is. <laughs> I look on Twitter and I see, ooh, a portable tire inflator I can buy on Amazon. I had the same reaction just a couple days ago when I saw a portable uh, car jumper. I was like, oh, I could use that for my car. Why does the guy with the blown eardrum look so rapey? It's, it's Desmond Xavier. He's, I don't know. That's it, He's part of the rascals in Impact. Uh, anything, anything. WWE have not offered a contract extension to Carmella. I wonder if she's interested in working Japan. I want to see. I want to go to Vertigo here real. Well, okay, you know what? I, I could probably get done with the Idol Pro thing. I want to go to Vertigo real quick and just see how much that would take. Oz is raising cash by selling their dojo. Do they just not have any money? 
Oh no, they were a bit in the hole because if they sold their Dojo for forty one two fifty, and they're at three ninety nine, they are they are going out of out of business. I can see right now, based off of the people that they have signed, that yeah, it's it's costing them some money. I would love to bring Mako Satomura in, but she is expensive. Aja Kong is kind of the same way. Even though Aja Kong can't really do anything. Chihiro Hashimoto is expensive. Ozaki's expensive. Karayana, Yoniyama is probably not. Well, even she's 400. Jesus. Uh, Fujimoto's expensive. Toyota's expensive. Matsumoto's maybe one of the lesser expensive ones at only 240. Yoshiko's fucking expensive as shit. Oh, well, I'd have to jump to Japan. Kao Kobayashi might might not be too expensive. I don't know. You got a lot of expensive people. This might be why. Jesus. Half your you're probably they're probably running a lot of shows too, I imagine. Here's their show history. Well, they haven't ran any shows this year. But yeah, cuz they do tours, so it looks like they stopped their tour at the beginning of December and they just did like three big shows. Jesus. No wonder they were losing money. <clears throat> uh, okay, so what are we looking at? <sighs> so even, even with my maxed out uh, negotiation skill, it's still probably... 580 it's probably about 570 580 that's still I mean it is Carmella you know you're a WWE talent you've been there for a little bit you're gonna be you're gonna be able to command a higher salary I had my web browser open for a reason I can't even remember what the hell it was for exactly I wish I could remember what it was for. IWA Mid-South, trying to get Tommy Dreamer. That makes sense. I wonder if Tommy... Well, you know what? Tommy Dreamer probably would work. But I don't know. I don't know what a lot of that former ECW talent uh, would command from... Uh, oh, he's the booker of IWA Mid-South. What? Who owns it now? Oh, Ian Rotten still owns it, but Dreamer books it. That's probably about the. It's probably about the uh, the 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 closest. It should be, and Michael Elgin's their biggest star. And Chael Sonnen. Can you imagine Chael Sonnen? Is he a wrestler? No, he's just an announcer, color guy. He can't. He can't be cheap. He cannot be cheap. Now I want to know. How much does it cost to book Chael Sonnen? 400 Now in real life, Chael Sonnen's probably not nearly that cheap. Ninja Gaiden 2. If I played it, I played it a long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, there's some weird MMA crossover guys because Impact did all this. It, it, it kind of helps the MMA. Or, um, Impact has done a lot of um, has done a lot of MMA crossovers. So you get a lot of guys who are MMA guys or former MMA guys that uh, end up being in this. Okay, stomach infection. I don't think she signed with me, right? No. Just someone I looked into. Like, if I go here, let me look and see real quick. Because I'm sure if I go, eh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Uh, anyone who's alive based in let's say anyone based in America has the attribute where are they at oh my god yeah there's a lot of attributes now 
So I got to figure it out. MMA fighter. Let's just look at anyone who's an MMA fighter. We got Chael Sonnen. We got Frank Near. Jake Hager, of course. Josh Barnett. Barnett, I think just, well, I mean, he just did blood sports. So that makes sense. Yeah, Barnett's kind of expensive. King Mo, of course. Is he really an MLW? I mean, it doesn't say he was signed, so he was already signed pregame. Lady Tapa, Matt McCuskey, Tyrone Evans. I'm sure former MMA fighter. Also will reveal some guys. Lashley, Kane Velasquez. How much is Kane Velasquez? Of course. A lot of money, but still. Renata, Batista, Shamrock. Shamrock's got to be. Yeah. Shafir, Riddle, Razor, Rocky, Scorpio, Baszler, Nakamura, Lawler. All right, reset. I think, like, Suzuki, Sakuraba, and all them, but they're not based out of America, so. Shamrock, look, is 86? Yeah, of course. Dude is old now. All right, four days until Undeniable. Series about a game called The Movies. I think once upon a time I wanted to do, I wanted to have that game. Uh, you should rip off Open Fight Night from TNA. I think I actually, if I look into my titles, I think that was a possible title I thought about. Uh, was something called it was something that was like an open challenge title so yeah an open challenge title would be would be dope where's Dan Sev I wish oh I would wish Dan Seven is in here I'm pretty sure he's not he might have been in a he might have been in a in an update of this I gotta I gotta maybe look in that hmm <clears throat> All right, look at that. We already we already have made are already back up to our thousand bucks, just in time for our undeniable. Perfect. Anything happen here? Uh, NBA Power Main Event Fantastica Mania. Uh, nice. Saya Kamitani quitting Stardom. She walked out on Stardom. June Skywalker did that extension for Ember Moon. Boom, boom. All right. Let's take another stardom. Another disgruntled. Let's take ourselves another disgruntled stardom worker. You don't have a lot of those yet. We have some we have a we have a fair bit of disgruntled uh Tokyo Joshi Pro Workers. I don't think Hanan's quit stardom yet, no. A few of them have, though. Let me see here. That's all right. I think Harna's still working there. Hikari's still working there. Is Frank Trigg? I don't think he is. <laughs> I don't think... Uh, Frank Trigg is not in here. All right, 13 days from there. There's literally two open dates this month for Idle Pro, but that sounds that sounds about right. Bob Sapp. Um, funny you mention that. Is I think that's what I was looking up. I was looking up a uh, possibility of. A new uh, Real World Chronicles database. It looks like they have an October one, but I think in the August one, they actually added Bob Sapp as a player character. Oh, looks like they added some other, they added a bunch of other workers here. See, now that I'm thinking about it, uh,. I want to see if there's any noteworthy people that I really want to pick up. There's a couple. There's a couple people in the August one I need to pick up and put in. Uh, Riki Choshu, 
he must be back somewhere doing something. Benjamin Carter, Will Hobbs. I got to get Will Hobbs. Uh, Warren Bangs. Ooh, Himawari Unagi's finally in there. I got to get her. Uh, ooh, the Regal Brothers. Damn, there's some, uh, they're like, uh, I think they started working GCW, the Regal, the Regal Twins, because they work, they work a lot here in the Midwest, so it's interesting to see some of the Midwest guys in here. Uh, let's see here. Bali and Aki, he's got Bali and Aki in here. Added some more companies, Black Label Pro, Defy, Glee, Pro Wrestling Freedoms. I don't see. He hasn't added in Tokyo Joshi Pro's new rookie, but I need to add them in. <laughs> Revolution Fight Club legend Bob Sam. I mean, he isn't there yet. Soon to be Revolution Fight Club legend. Bob Sapp starting up a Joshi wrestling promotion though would be kind of fun because he wouldn't be in America. He'd be he'd be in Japan. He's a bigger deal there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see. Anything here? Bully Ray has retired. Tajiri is retiring. Oh, we're getting to some we're getting to some interesting names. Uh, Stu Grayson's resigning. Okay. Get through that, get through that. Tajiri looks fat in that picture. I mean, the dude's in his 40s, you know. I think he's already semi-retired. I don't think he runs his... I, I don't know if he runs much of his hustle promotion anymore. Or what he does anymore. See, now it makes me wonder. Uh, Yoshihiro... I wonder if he goes by Yoshihiro Tajiri or just Tajiri. I bet you he probably just goes by Tajiri now. Uh, we'll click on this and see here. Yeah, the guy's 50 now. And some guys still look 50, but, you know, some guys still look good at 50, but, you know. I really do find it in. What? Where did I just. I just saw this. Oh, yeah, his theme song. Was smack my bitch up by the prodigy. What a, what a great, for someone like Tajiri, to come out and fucking, to come out to smack my bitch up. What does he do now? Uh, he just wrestled a few days ago in, for all Japan. Okay, that makes sense. What the fuck is Oscar Pro Wrestling? Who owns Oscar Pro? Akira Shinose. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like he works a lot of All Japan. And maybe... Uh, yeah, that's about it. Oscar Pro. Looks like he worked BJW right before COVID hit. Uh, that's about it. How old is Tajiri? 50. Tajiri is 50. Ugh. Let's see here. Travers for Drew Galloway, Travels for Shelton Benjamin. I always think it's interesting when the WWE stars are like, yeah, I'd like to work in new areas. It's like you work it for WWE. They're, you're going to go where they tell you to go. I know you're unlocking basically new areas that you can work in, but, you know, it only makes sense you're going to go to other places anyway. James Storm, Eli Drake feud. Tommy Dreamers on a handshake deal with IWA Mid South. Lee John Silver, Desmond Xavier's fully fit, just in time. Ho Ho Loon wants to work other places. Wonder how much it costs for. Oh God, it can't. It can't cost that much for him. He's a good guy though. I met him. I met him at a uh, Dragon Gate show. It was weird because I really didn't expect him to be at a Dragon Gate show. Like, he wasn't even on the show, I believe. I think he was just, you know, 
helping out with the merch table that day. But yeah. Uh, I think we're good there. So next, next day is the day of the show. Mm-mm-mm. There we go. Anything else happen? Some guys staying with WWE, NWA, and all that. Zoe Lucas, Mr. Rev Pro Show. If she drops out of Rev Pro, I'll probably sign her for Japan. Bring her back to Japan. I could still do it, but I don't want to pay no $200 to bring her. I don't have the money right now to fly her from England to Japan. All right. Other than that, I think we're good. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, my God. With the fucking revolution. Holy shit. Don't, don't make me think you're as bad as... Fucking <laughs> Panda and Okada get. Jesus. All right. Come and go theater. Uh, how many people are we expecting? Expecting 83. Oh, you know why? It's because I bet. See, I bet you we're already in the, in the PM period. I think we're expecting less people is because this doesn't have the... Let's see, where where is the, oh my goodness. Where do I, I should be able to find, oh, that's right, there's no previous, that's right, I'd have to actually look at the show history. Because technically, Black Label has gone up in uh, importance, attendance is going to be higher, but, hello, hello. All right. Um, that's all right. Even <laughs> eighty-three people's not the best, but you know what? We'll at least have a, we'll at least have a good show. I think. Ninja kick in the UFC fight. I don't think I did. I think I was seeing. I was seeing even. I I I I, I was probably. Did it just recently happen? Because I saw even like. <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid. I saw even Joshi wrestlers who were commenting on the fucking UFC kick. <laughs> and just knocking the dude <laughs> just Alright, pre booking. Uh what should we start with? Should we start with Mata and Tim Dance? Yeah, that's We'll do that. We'll start off with that. And we're going to help Mata get his win back. We're going to keep it open, though. Make it feel like they're, they're both kind of on the same level. I think Tim Dons technically is on a little bit better level than him, but that's all right. Decisive win. Let me see what the difference looks like. 19 in the Midwest versus 8. So, yeah, this should help Mata out. And Tim doesn't seem too phased by it, so that's good. Is Effie going to try to curb stomp Fox into a dildo? Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of things that could be said about that could be said about that. Oh, is this the kick? Let me see this. Oh, oh. Good God! What a kick! Oh my God! He if <laughs> if he was selling like that in wrestling, it'd be kind of it'd be it'd be considered a pretty good sell. You you can literally watch the eyes roll into the back of his head on that one. Holy shit! That has a that has a facial whiplash effect that is almost on on par with the um uh what's his name the Michael Bisping knockout 
the facial expression as he gets knocked the fuck out is is on par with the Bizping knockout. <laughs> I saw the man's eyes roll into the back of his head in real time as he fucking just completely collapsed down. He was. He was his lights went out as he was still standing. Jesus Christ. You know what? I I'm gonna I'm gonna link that. Uh, I'm gonna get a, I mean, the video's already linked, but I want to see who who the two guys were again. Will it tell me? It won't tell. Oh, okay. Joaquin Buckley. Joaquin Buckley. With the kick. I'm doing that for. <laughs> I'm doing that also for like posterity's sake, because you never know if someone in like three years or four years from now is going to watch this in like 2023 and wondered what I just reacted to. And yeah, Joaquin Buckley ninja kick or knockout on Fight Island. Holy shit. And it's going to be something that's going to stick around on the internet for for ever anyway, so. All right, let's see here. <coughs> Yeah, you're you're gonna have to link me if if you want me to see it though. But yeah, okay. So we got uh, flip forever neon ninjas is gonna go here, and we're gonna give this to all right. Neon ninjas need themselves a win, just a bit of a win here. Oh yeah, it'd just be a copy paste link. I think you could probably do a a, a copy on the because there's a share button on even YouTube Mobile. With a copy link, and then you can paste it in the chat. Uh, let's go open match. Let's go decisive win. There you go. Got that there. Before I get to that, there's going to be another match right here because there's. I'm going to run an angle. So we're going to get, uh, oh, hang on here. I need to actually put them in because they're not in here yet. Add a new team. There we go. There we go. I like how that's nice and easy. Nice and easy to do that. Um, what, what is, what is this technically called? I'm just going to call it Assisted Standing Shooting Star Press. Save it. Because that's one of their signatures, but I don't think it's officially their their finish. <clears throat> and add a match. There we go. Body guys, rascals, there we go. All right, let me see this. Badir Hari versus Stefan Leko. Oh, a boxing knockout? Oh, a kickboxing knockout. I was like, I was like, oh, they're wearing boxing gloves. I don't know how good that's going to be. And then he just fucking Walker, Texas Ranger kicked the dude. Jesus. Oh my god, that man is out. That man is complete that man is still out. Oh, the way he connected. Oh the thud. Just the thud. You can you can see the thud. Oof. Super stoned press. That sounds about right. I do think I do think the other one might be a little bit better just because he kicked and his hand got caught and he pushed off of that hand uh, off of that foot that got caught. It is very good, but I I, I think I have to give the slight edge to uh, to the most recent one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, get to Wentz. 
Let's do let's do an open match. And should they go all out? Uh, you know what? Body guys don't have the ability to really go all out. <laughs> Decisive win. There we go. I can name it Superstone Press. That sounds about right. Did I ever, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've told the story of when Desmond Xavier worked me into a uh, Kind of, kind of, um, not worked me. Uh, kind of carnied me into buying a T-shirt that was too small for me from him. I don't know if I, if I told that. I think I've told that story before. Oh yeah, Showtime, Showtime kick is pretty good. Oh my God, so many links now. Um, I need to actually, I need to actually book this damn show. Marty Martinez, Tommy Mercer. Whoops, that's not what I want. I just want to add that to the booking sheet. We're going 18 minutes. And we're going Mercer. There we go. We're going open match. Decisive win. Should I make him submit? Nah, we'll we'll make sure it's a pinfall. And I think that's good. And then main event, of course, AR Fox Effie. We're going to have AR Fox defend. Open match. Uh, do they have the psychology to slow build? I haven't really thought about it because usually the psychology isn't built up for a couple of years in this game. And you're right. Um, so let's see here. Um, should I make it tainted? Uh, I'll make it decisive. But there's going to be a distraction from Brandon Tate and Brent Tate. There you go. There we go. Book that segment. All right. So 98 minutes of wrestling set up for the show. Oh, no. Wait. We still have our open challenge match. I forgot all about that. We still have our open challenge match to put in. Hang on. I got to change some names around anyway. Uh, should he be a putz? I don't know what he should be. What should his, what should his name be? I'm going to change his last name. I don't even know if he can go by Heath Miller, considering I think that was in WWE when he was that. But there you go. What could he do? Uh, get inspiration. Let's see. He can't play dominant badass legitimate or offbeat on stable. Can you imagine if he played a badass? It's Heath. I know it's usually just Heath. I could do that. Um, did it say he can't do Weasley underdog? He could do Weasley or underdog. Well, that's what the putts gimmick is. Let me see what other Weasley underdog things he could do. Anti-hardcore censor, corporate suit, evil foreigner, <laughs> genius. He comes out as a genius. Uh, lounge lizard manipulator. I guess putts is maybe the closest thing. That's a good. That's a good uh, evil foreigner. <laughs> He's from the south. That is. That's it. That is foreign. I guess I'll keep him. I'll keep him as he is. Then I'll make it uh, slightly more creative and unique see if he can get that off the ground a little bit 
There we go. All right. Oh, yeah. I think I'm just going to change it to... All right. I'll just call him just Heath. All right. So we add that match. One-on-one. -on -one. JJ Garrett's open challenge. Answered by Heath. How long do I think he could go? 68 and 80. So what if we did 15? Still quite a bit, but that's all right. <clears throat> well, let's see here. Heath to be the victor. Da, 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 da. Let's see. I know that's like his whole gimmick on Impact is that he doesn't have a last name, so I guess I should keep with that because I can't imagine he's been anything else. One of his names is Heath Wallace Miller Esquire. <laughs> I might just make it Heath anyway, or Heath Miller anyway. Uh, decisive win. There we go. I think I am going to change it. I think I'm going to give him a a full. I think I am going to give him a last name. I'm going to do Heath Miller. And then Mike Perro's name, he usually just goes by Perro. So I think I might actually just change that to Perro. So we'll at least change that part too. Uh, all right, let me see. So there you go, 115 minutes worth of wrestling on this show. I'd say that's pretty damn good. Uh, let's see here. Mana, Tim Donst. Let's see. His menace is pretty good. I wonder if I should do his menace. What's his selling? His selling's not great. Um, all right, Menace and his Charisma, I guess? I could do his selling, I guess, on that one too. It'd probably go a little bit better. There we go. All right. So let's see here. Mata Postman stands tall as Donst tries to stand up, but struggles. So like three minutes of like Mata really getting his uh, his uh, revenge on Tim Donst. There we go. Flip Forever versus Neon Ninjas. So let's see here. We've got uh, Facade, Wheeler Yuta, uh, Andrew Everett, and Eli Everfly. And then we also need Sabby and Jesse Gatters. Actually, we're going to wait. We're going to do. There we go. We're going to do like two minutes of this. So. Uh, Neon Ninjas and Flip Forever post match. Sure, a handshake for the competitive match. Whoops. So, just like two minutes on that. Uh, we'll have them sell their match. But I think it kind of gets them all over there. It's a friendly competition between two babyface tag teams, so nothing really big there. However, we're going to do Sabby. We're going to do Jesse Godders. And we're going to have Facade and Wheeler Yuta. Ah. 
Ugh, my ears itch. Gotta write your comic book. All right, see ya. Uh, Andrew Everett. I gotta remember who who it was that was being booked in these. All right. Um, let's go. Charisma, charisma. Selling, 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 selling. Puts them all over. I would say a minor defeat with these guys. So, body guys hit the ring with chairs. Lay all four out. Grab mics and decide to have their own. Uh, want to have own open challenge now there we go making money from this promotion or is it still a loss uh vertigo vertigo here i'm actually uh i'm actually making some money uh my joshi promotion i'm still losing money <laughs> In fact, I'm funneling the money that I'm making from this promotion over to my Japanese promotion. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Move that up there. Body guys and the rascals. Give you that. And then... Sabby and Jesse. Zachary Wentz. Desmond Xavier. And uh, we'll do charisma, charisma. There we go. Body guys argue with the ref over the pinfall as rascals celebrate with the fans. There we go. Eh, uh, like four minutes. Neutral, I guess, for them, but at least a more bigger success there with them. Let's see. Put that there. Oh, we need that there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And let's see here. All right. Garrett out for open challenge. Answered by Heath. He plans to win. Make money for his family. Eh, five minutes. Well, we'll do six minutes. This will be a slightly bigger. He'll have his he'll have his uh, promo and uh, Heath will have his promo as well. So there we go. Do that. Leave it as that because I think we're starting to run out of time that we're going to be able to use for this. So all right, Marty Martinez, Tommy Mercer, Tommy Mercer. Here we go. We'll do, <clears throat> I'll split this up. So we'll do, here we go. Mercer and Martinez. Promos about, uh, let's see here. Being trapped inside the steel cage tonight there we go who am I voting for I am not telling people that I actually had my mom ask me that today I was like I'm not gonna say anything to anybody because I'm just not um I am I am so beyond doing anything like that it used to be it used to be like what's the word it used to be rude to kind of do it to ask and talk about politics, but now politics is all anyone wants to talk about. So 
I am not I'm not partaking in that. Even my mom was like, she was like, really? You're not going to tell me? No, I'm not going to tell you. Even if I vote exactly how you want me to vote or I vote exactly how my dad wants me to vote, which is pretty much the opposite. I'm not going to tell people because it's not a conversation I feel like having. <laughs> it's just not a conversation I don't. It's just not a conversation I want to have. No it's it's I have not hardly seen much good come out of people going, oh, yeah, who are you voting for? What are you doing this? That, that it's it's I don't I'm not having those conversations. It's stupid. It's dumb. I'll vote for who I want to vote for. And I just want to be I'm, I'm one of those people who just want to be left the hell alone. That's all I want. That's all I want. Tommy Mercer, Marty Martinez, who's the independent candidate. I can't remember, but the independent, I think like, I think the libertarian candidate this year took a lot of uh, democratic stances. Like, I think it went pretty big into a lot of the, the Biden-esque stances, so... It really, it really depends. Um, all right, so selling and selling. There we go. All right, let's see. So... Uh, let's see. Mercer is exhausted, but is able to leave the cage as Marty. Uh, yeah, fuck politics. End of story. There's a guy that I was, uh, there was a guy that I was talking about. Uh, or not a guy I was talking about it, but the guy I listened to the, his whole, his whole shtick has been, his whole shtick has been, uh, sleep 2020. He's like, just stay in bed. <laughs> just no good's going to come of this. <laughs> yeah, that's just, yeah, that's what I did in 2016. Actually, is I was at work when the whole political thing was going down and like, I don't think they officially named the president in 2016 by the time I got off work, but I spent a good chunk of it just watching the insanity happen all throughout the evening as I was, as I was sitting at my desk. Uh, let me see here. Uh, you know, there's actually people who consider if you don't vote, it's like, well, you're just throwing your vote away then. I mean, that's that's another thing is there's the, there are those people. <laughs> there are those people. That's why I say I just don't discuss it. You know what it's like? It's like dealing with a cop at a traffic stop. That's what it's that's what it's turned into, where political discussion has turned into dealing with a cop at a traffic stop. What are you doing here today? I don't discuss my day, sir. Who did you vote for? I don't discuss my voting, sir. <laughs> I just don't. Well, did you go vote? I don't discuss my day. Am I am I being detained or am I free to leave? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. What is, what is Marty doing? Um, there, we'll just put it, it can barely move. So it does at least showcase the fact that they went through a hell of a fight there for 20 some odd minutes. That definitely happened. Uh, AR Fox and Effie. A.R. Fox, Brandon Tate, Brent Tate, Effie. All right. Both Effie and Fox are 
preparing for the fight. Uh, Fox gets prepped with help from Tate. Whoops. Twins. So there we go. Three minutes there. Let's see. Uh, charisma. Charisma. I guess adding adding the Tate twins as part of that could help help them out just a little bit. There we go. All right. And then finally at the end, Savvy. No. AR Fox. Effie. Whoops. AR Fox and Effie are hurt. The Fox slowly gets up. Uh, to raise the belt in victory. There we go. So I'd say three minutes on that. Oops. Minor success. Yeah, well, I'd say a bigger success. It's a good title defense for the champion. Okay. Uh, how much time have I spent on this? Let's just let's just throw. I've got here. I'm, I got an idea. I just want to see how much time this takes ah oh, son of a bitch we'll just do that angle with ricky starks eight minutes all right then we can we pull this down all right looks like we're within the limits if we go seven that works ryan creamer who the hell is that uh let's see so ricky starks Nick Dinsmore. So we haven't we haven't really used him before, hardly. Uh, Starks out to call out the fact he is not in title match. Dinsmore reminds him he lost. Starks upset and ah. Lines of loss, Starks, attacks. We'll just do that. We'll just make it like that. And book segment. And, oh, God, where are we going to throw this? Uh, you know what? We'll throw this right before the J.J. Garrett Heath thing. So we'll throw this up here and up there. There we go. All right. I think we have our show. There you go. That's our longest show that we've had in a while. Oh, my God. Dinsmore is pro... Whoops. We don't want that. Dinsmore is probably going to be shattered over this many. This much to do. Can I Can I hire another road agent? There's got to be another road agent I can get for the show, right? Ooh, I can get Scott Armstrong. Uh, Anyone else a, a decent road agent? There's some half-decent people. Curtis Axel. <laughs> I should get I should bring Jax Dane in if I've got Tommy Mercer I should probably bring Jax Dane in that's a possible thing uh, it's amazing Mr. Anderson's not technically a uh... alright maybe we can split up the road agenting here 80 alright yep there you go we can maybe even split up the refereeing for the uh, for the night, or is that not a? Doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad, actually. Let's do. Um, well, let me let me look at the differences here between Scott Armstrong's skills seventy one one hundred eighty one one hundred and Nick Dinsmore sixty eight fifty fifty or sixty one hundred fifty ninety two. Okay, so. Let's give Armstrong the main event, but he'll also be the referee for this one as Dinsmore does that. Actually, let me see here. Justin King, can he be the ref and the agent for it? 
I don't know if he can. He can. Okay, so yeah. He'll be the ref and the agent for that. Hmm. And we'll give... Um, We'll give Armstrong. Now we'll give we'll give Justin King this, but we're gonna have Armstrong do the road agenting for this. So we're we're pulling some segments away for him to to have to do. And we'll give him we'll give him Garrett and Miller as well. There we go. So we've pulled about three three matches away from. Uh, Nick Dinsmore and it seems to help so that's good all right I think we're good holy shit hour 15 this is going much slower than I wanted it to <laughs> all right it's because we actually have a big show to book so this is probably what's the uh the issue here all right hang on Wanted to take a few gulps of um, water before I <clears throat> really got into uh, into this right now. All right, let's start the show. We're going to start off the show here. Project Vertigo, undeniable. Uh, it is uh, not, not quite as, uh, I think, as highly regarded as Black Label is. So we only got 86 people for this, a little bit down. I probably could have edited that a little bit or just changed the, the name. But nonetheless, uh, we are here uh, for it in our opening matchup. Mata Abdel Hamid looking for a bit of revenge against Tim Donst after the last couple of months, especially after the attack from last week. And uh, 1806, Mata Abdel Hamid gets the win over Tim Donst. And uh, it says it got the crowd hotter and got a strong start. So there you go. Even though it's only a 34, still does quite well. Mata post-match stands tall as Don's tried to strand up and struggles. He, he uh, really got knocked for a loop there in that match and uh, working to uh, working to try to stand back up as uh, Mata walks to the back. We get a couple of face tag teams in Flip Forever and Neon Ninjas to... Just having a, a friendly competition here between the two. Goes almost 14 minutes, but then uh, Facade gets the, uh, hits the hyper crush on Andrew Everett and gets the win. Good little match there of Facade and uh, Andrew Everett helping uh, carry that there. Eli Everfly, the, the weakest of them, but not too much, not too weak, so that's all right. Still just a nice little, uh, nice little uh, wrestling match there between the two. And after that, they share a handshake for the competitive match. They raise each other's arms and, uh, you know, the fans, the fans uh, stand for them and uh, gets, gets, uh, you know, they get a round of applause before the body guys hit the ring with chairs, lay all four of them out as all as all four men are reeling. Sabby and Jesse Goddard's get on the mic and they are upset because they decided that if uh, there's going to be open challenges going on tonight, that they too are going to lay out an open challenge. They don't care who it is. They don't care what uh, you know what they're going to you know be capable of. They decided tonight is the night with a big night like this that they're going to get their first win in Project Vertigo. So they're calling out any two guys in the back who want to face them. And who answers the call but Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz of the Rascals. They are making their debut tonight and uh, doing pretty well. Jesus. Uh, let's see here. It goes only about 12 minutes. Body guys put up a fight with what they could. But uh, Wentz ends up uh, locking Sabby into a submission and forcing him to tap out as the Rascals get the win in their debut and uh very very um what is it uh very impressive already 44 and 49 desert xavier already proven to be one of the uh top competitors in uh in in our promotion with that 
And uh, at the end there, uh, Wentz and Xavier go out to the outside, go around the ring, and and uh, slap hands with the fans as uh, Sabby and Jesse Goddard's are uh, kind of coming to, or at least Sabby's Sabby's kind of coming to, and uh, they're arguing with the ref over the uh, the tap out that happened, and uh, arguing that Sabby had not indeed tapped out. Uh, but the ref once again made the call that, uh, of course, he actually did, and the uh, Rascals get the win. Ricky Starks coming out. He said that tonight is a night of call outs, and he's going to make a call out of his own. Uh, just a general call out that uh, it seems the management at Project Ver- Vertigo do not want him to get a Vertigo World Championship match. And uh, he's he's sick of uh, the treatment that he has received. And that prompts uh, the road agent, Nick Dinsmore, to uh, come down to the ring and uh, remind him that uh, he's had, in fact, a couple of number one contenders matches uh, before. And he has lost. So ever since the first episode, he's not been able to have uh, a world title match because he's he's lost uh, being able to uh, to get the big one. And Ricky Starks, upset by this, uh, decides to uh, lay out Nick Dinsmore as uh, referees and security hit the ring to uh, check up on Dinsmore. Starks uh, pulls himself out of the ring and climbs out of the ring and heads to the back. We get J.J. Garrett coming out for his open challenge. Of course, he said that he wants to uh, take on uh, anybody, he's been planning on uh, proving his worth tonight, and uh, he has the open challenge for anyone in the back to come out and face him. And uh, who accepts it but Heath Miller, making his Vertigo debut, comes out, uh, seems like to probably a pretty big pop uh, from the 86 people. But nonetheless... Um, Heath uh, comes out and he says he plans to win to continue making money for his family. Uh, He says he's he's got kids. He's happy to be employed. But uh, tonight he's he uh, debuts in Project Vertigo and we get J.J. Garrett and Heath Miller goes around 15 minutes. Heath Miller hits sweetness on J.J. Garrett and gets the win and Heath Miller successful in his Vertigo debut. Moving on to the semi-main event of the evening. We get a pair of uh, promos, quick promos, from both Tommy Mercer and Marty Martinez discussing their upcoming cage match tonight and uh, what it's going to be like having to deal with the other person inside a steel cage. In fact, you cannot escape. Uh, Escaping would be a forfeit. You have to pin or submit uh, your uh, opponent inside the cage. My product pop performance or something else. I think it's usually performance over popularity is the main thing, but it's like 60, 40, something like that. And 17, it goes about 1750 superb wrestling in good heat. They had a great match. It looks like, or at least Mercer had a good part of the match <laughs> and uh, ends up spearing Marty Martinez Maybe even right into the cage. But uh, nonetheless, a brutal little match between these two guys for nearly 18 minutes as they beat the hell out of one another. And uh, Tommy Mercer hits the spear and manages to pin him. And Mercer gets the much-needed victory over Marty Martinez. And uh, Mercer is exhausted, but the uh, cage door opens. And uh, he's able to... uh, to climb on out and leave the cage. Mar- he turns over to Marty, who's still barely trying to, to crawl up even onto his hands and knees as uh, he has been beaten down. And uh, referees will be tending to Marty here as uh, Tommy Mercer is successful tonight. And we get a pair of promos leading up to the main event. AR Fox and he is uh, set up in his uh, his boots and pants, taping up his fists for the street fight coming up. As uh, he's he's getting uh, 
a bit of a pep rally with the uh, with the Tate twins as they're kind of talking him up, getting ready for his main event. Effie by himself also is uh, taping up his fists as he prepares for his street fight. And here we go. Tonight's main event, AR Fox and Effie. Uh, street fight for the Vertigo world title. Superb wrestling in great heat. It went 22 and a half minutes. The Tate twins did come in to distract Effie. Didn't do uh, as much as I think they wanted, though, as it gave just enough of a distraction uh, late into the match as uh, AR Fox uh, hits Crunch. Not quite sure exactly what his uh, what his uh, finishers look like, but nonetheless, AR Fox getting the pin on Effie in 2237, making his first official defense of the Vertigo world title. Lack of psychology tended to drift a bit, but you know what? They had great chemistry. AR Fox pulled off a 65, and Effie pulled off a 50, so that was phenomenal. And uh, they went through hell together in this street fight, and they are hurt. And there's uh, different places that they are cut from, but uh, AR Fox climbs out of the wreckage and uh, is handed the Vertigo world title and raises the belt up in victory to end the show. And that is undeniable. So let's see here. AR Fox will get some praise. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give Scott Armstrong some uh, some some praise for uh, or at least complimented for uh, coming in and, and doing a solid job there. Um, who else? I'm gonna I'm gonna compliment Heath. Heath uh, Heath did well. There we go. All right. Good Lord. It took way longer than I thought it was going to. But then again, it was a pretty big show. Can you imagine how much worse it's going to get when I still have to actually book the, the other show? Uh, let's see here. Flip Gordon kicked out of Villain Enterprises. Yukio Sakaguchi's leaving DDT. Uh, I wonder if it's because he's... Oh, probably because of his age. That'd be pretty cool. I like Sakaguchi. Chris Hero responding to Jake Hager. <laughs> Body shaming. I don't know if Chris Hero would call on him for, for that, but Chris Hero does make a good... Does make a good point uh, for his... um For uh, not being completely in shape and still being a great worker. There we go. 48, I think, is one of my best shows, even at 86 uh, people showing up. Only 517 in debt. We're almost out of debt, you know, until we run a show and we're going to run another 2,000 in debt. It's probably what's going to happen. In fact, speaking of debt, we're 700 in debt, but we'll make it back up here by the end of this. That's $1,400. So I think we might end up losing about 300 or so. I don't know. We might end up making back most of the money, even after giving a thousand away. I think we'll do okay. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I think that's it for right now. Basically, just trying to get to week four officially. I am out of water, but that's all right. Uh, let's see here. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, a Riki Choshu Produce. That's kind of cool. Uh, not much else going on, though. So nothing I got to worry about. There we go. Basically, just making sure we don't uh, we don't lose all of our money. That's a good chunk of money, though, because you know Heath is probably our most expensive guy now by a long shot. I think AR Fox is in like the hundred and sixty, hundred and eighty range, but Heath is like two fifty, something like that. 
let's see. Sulked his way out of crash. Leo Rush argued with somebody on social media. That sounds about right. And that's about it as far as anything noteworthy. Ugh. You know who I should maybe look into? I should look into some of the former Hawkeye Pro guys that still haven't really made it huge. <laughs> You know, go go get me Alex Reynolds. I'm sure the big O is probably still in here and kind of cheap. Bet you Mark Sherman's still in here. Let's see. Uh, Smo Joe fully fit. Jim Duggan to retire. I figured he would have already been retired. Antonio Honda won the independent junior heavyweight title. Uh, let's look at this. Keep Bronson. Virgil's retiring. All right. Here we go. Hey, speaking of someone from Hawkeye Pro, I could bring back. <laughs> oh, people will probably not be too thrilled about that. I need to. I need to see some of the prices on some of those guys. <laughs> Let's see. Bunch of shows. Titus O'Neil raises money for charity. I wonder what things he has as far as his uh, attributes. People, person, positive outlook, stud athlete, heavy social media user, loyal outside interest. So a lot of things. A lot of things that help. There we go. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> That was uh oh yeah that was a uh, lady beard that was up on the that was up on the deal there. <laughs> I'm sure that would probably get people to That would probably get a nice mixed reaction right there. Chris Harris. Chris Harris went from a went from a, a up and coming pro wrestler to just looking like a pro wrestling fan. It looks like a dude who he looks like a dude. Chris Harris at 47 now is unfortunately looking like a dude who looks like he has a pro wrestling podcast and talks about the business. That beard has to be that beard has to be um, that that has to be done on purpose, right? Like you don't you don't really shave like that's a shaving beard like all the way. You see, you shave all of that until you actually get to the actual neck beard part. What a weird thing. Mustache is kind of overgrown. Eh. There we go. That was, that was your beard. I trim my beard. I keep it. I keep it at least fairly neat. I'm very. No, I don't have a pedo stash. I keep my stash trimmed pretty. Uh, pretty well and i keep a beard beard because my my cleaned up face i don't like it i want to see real quick let's uh alex reynolds what do we got here 70 bucks that ain't bad uh oh is it adam or reiner oh he's unemployed oh look at that 30 bucks plus plus uh travel Uh, let's see here. 30 bucks plus travel. It's not bad at all. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh. Oh. Take a look here. Ricky Starks and Leo Rush argue with one another. After Leo Rush criticized a match that happened to involve a friend of Ricky Starks. Of course. Just just two people just making a scene on social media. 
Uh, I'm trying not to yawn. It's not that late. It's, I mean, it's 11 o'clock, but on what's essentially a weekend, that's not bad at all. Thankfully, I don't have anywhere to go tomorrow, or at least not until like, what, five, six o'clock, something like that. Let's see here. Oh, Sammy Zayn. What does it say? Broken nose. Oh, that's all right. That's not bad. Oh, the Miz is injured. Chest injury. Oh, we're almost to Royal Rumble, aren't we? Then we get to see who the, who's uh, there. Ooh, Katsuhiko Nakajima. Only oh, still with Noah. Okay. Cholo out of CML. Mickey Knuckles pregnant. Curie wanted an ice ribbon belt. More pregnancies. Team Raku. Not quite out of Tokyo Joshi Pro, but she. Oh boy. Uh, Leo Tonga's going back to Japan, I assume. All right. <clears throat> Oh. All right, let's see here. A lot of different stuff. Can you imagine how many more things would be coming into the trending topics if I if I added even more promotions. I mean, I guess it'd give people more jobs, but Jesus. Oh, Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager 3. Horizon Events. Oh, that's in... <laughs> Stardom Anniversary 10. Ooh. Oh, they did a cage. Wait, they opened the show with a cage match. <laughs> they opened they opened the show between two sisters who are 13 and like 16, respectively. How old is Rena? 14 and 16, respectively, inside a cage match. I don't remember the last time. I don't remember if Stardom's ever had a cage match. I don't remember the last time that's ever happened, let alone in an opening match. Samira defeated Saida. Riho and Micah defeated Oedo Tai. Kiona defeated Tam. Well, at least someone gets a... At least she gets a big win somewhere. Julia, Jamie Hader, Death Yamasan defeated Utami, Layla, and Sky. What a weird set. And considering Layla, Hirsch, and Sky definitely aren't there anymore. Konami and AZM for the... Oh, that's the Wonder. That's the White Belt. That's not even the Red Belt. They didn't even put the Red Belt on the line. They still got a 62. Jesus. All I wanted to do was see... Look how many shows they got going on. Chris Jericho. What did, what did he do at C? Bad Luck Fale and Hajime is the... Let's see here. Doki, Taka, Yoshihashi. Interesting. I just want to see here. Oh, okay. Bakuretsu Sisters and Mira Clans. What is this in Japan? This this is in America, but he's got a lot of Japanese guys coming in for this. Naruki Doi and Brother Yashi. Kazayashi, Ricky Marvin, Kazma, and Shota. What an odd, what an odd set of uh, shows, especially considering it's independent wrestling, supposedly in America, but it's got a crap load of Japanese talent. There we go. Let's just get out of that. Oh, Japan, 14 year old girl in the fucking cage match. I'd be surprised about a cage match in general for that. I don't think Joshi I don't think Joshi wrestling has had a cage match in quite a while like it's been it's been a long time Let's 
Bum, bum, bum. Let's see. Smash Look at the Future. Leo Tonga is back in New Japan. Nyla Rose. Trollish comments about her weight. Uh, I don't think she gets comments. I don't think Nyla gets comments on her weight. Maybe, but I think it's more other aspects of <laughs> of Nyla Rose. Only in Japan where you can have teens in a cage match and not have the police called. Yeah. Makes you an adult. There we go. Da, 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 da. Doesn't look like anything. Is it Tuesday or Thursday? Well, I guess we'll find out if it's... I want to say it's Thursday, so I think we still have a couple more days until... Oh, it is today. Never mind. Shinkiba, this venue. All right. Let's see here. No backstage incidents. All right. Uh, Pre-booking... Let me see here. Well, we'll at least pre-book the, we'll pre-book the main event. Ooh, who's gonna take the win? Should we give it to Himika, Honori Hana, Mirai? Uh, we'll give it to Himika. How about that? <clears throat> there we go. Open match, uh, decisive win. Yeah, it was a story that people would troll Nyla. That was like, oh, she clapped back on someone who trolled about Nyla Rose's weight. It's like, I don't think it'd be Nyla Rose's rate. Wait, decisive win. All right, we'll just leave it at that then. Do we have a finish for her? Yeah, I assume. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. Will I watch the videos you post? Uh, no promises. Yeah, any any of the any of the beginning NXT before it just became a developmental deal in uh, 2012 really wasn't good. That's when I started watching NXT every week. Once they started going into full sale. And Seth Rollins became the NXT champion, and from then on. Uh, let's see, here we add the tag match. We'll give this to Camille. And open match. I guess we should probably script these as well. I'll make it tainted. How about that? We'll script it because they probably need it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, I at least have a couple of the, the matches booked, so let's see what we got. We'll add a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll at least add one one-on-one. -on -one. We'll exclude who's already booked, and we'll see what we, where we end up with this. As you could also see, yeah, I updated some pictures, which is nice because some of them looked weird. Some of them are most definitely outdated. Ooh. Actually, yeah, we should, since Saya walked out of stardom, we need to give her, we should give her a, uh, a match. Who should she face? Let me see. She's a 22. Nomura, Ram Kaicho. Ram Kaicho is a possibility. Um, but I think I'll give her, I could give her Miyako. Hmm. I'm thinking I could do Sinomara. Hmm. I'm thinking Miyako Matsumoto, but I feel like I could give her something else. That's all right. I'll give her that. Why not? See what she can do with that. 
Uh, let's see here. Stamina 77. Psychology's not good. Psychology's not that great there. There. Okay. So they could probably go 17. We'll see how long they can go with that, especially with psychology not being good. Saya getting the win. Open match. Script. Is a 17 minute match going to be scripted going to be very good? We'll see. There we go. Book the segment. We'll throw that somewhere in here. I want to look and see what it has for her moveset. Edit moveset. All right. Sickle hold, handstand, double knee drop. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to keep the running shooting star press. <clears throat> Let's go with that. I guess uh, make sure that she wins with a pin so that she does her shooting star press. There we go. All right. Let's do three way dance. Who do we want to put over? Let's let's put Notica in there to to help uh, get put over. Perhaps. Um, we could go Raku, maybe. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Makoto Shindo. Maybe someone who hasn't had super cool momentum. Uh, Bani Aikawa. All right, that should work. Here we go. Uh, how long? 70, I think Nodica's is the worst at 66. I wanna say she's gotten better though, at least skill wise. Oh yeah, she used to be at a 56, holy shit. So, eh, 13. It's it's not a it's not a big three way, but it helps put Notica over. And open match, and decisive win. There we go. Oh, referee cannot be. Oh, uh, we'll put Koharu in there. There we go. And I say one more match because I think what I want to do is Raku and Ram Kaicho. Give that as a match. See what we get here. Stamina 91. Stamina 74. Uh. We'll make it 18. See what they can do with that. They don't have great psychology, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's give it to Ram, but it's going to be an open match. We're going to try to script it. It's going to be a tainted win. Uh, outside interference on Raku by Hikari Noah. And I think that's about it. There you go. So we'll throw that. Uh, we'll throw that right there, I guess. Kind of split up the one on ones. All right. So there's your five. So we'll add in some of the other stuff here. So we'll have Nodoka and Yuki open up the show. Let's see. Makuretsu open the show. Greeting the fans and want Another shot at uh, strong kickers uh, soon. 
just like four minutes there. There you go. Minor success is there. Take that out. We'll open up the show with that. And let's see here. Raku Ram Kaicho. <coughs> Actually, let's do, let's stick with the Nodoka and Yuki thing and we'll have Yuki come out, Mirai. All right, so uh, Charisma, 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 I guess. And they're all kind of put over by it. <clears throat> Whoops. Uh, strong kickers out. Taunt. The sisters as Camille has tag match tonight with possible new. Uh, Stable mate and ah, with possible new friend. There we go. Put that up there, up there. All right, let's see. Raku Ram Kaicho. We do Raku Ram Hikari. <clears throat> oh, should I do? I'm trying to think of an angle that I could do with this. Let's see. Ram celebrates, but Hikari in starts beating down Raku, grabs. Kendo stick and beats her until secured. Ah. Uh, let me see here. Hikari grabs Kendo stick and starts beating Raku until broken up by security there we go yeah four minutes there you go selling uh i'd say it's definitely a defeat and in that in that interaction as well uh we'll have her sell i guess is the the best one maybe but success and ram kaito is just sort of there Nothing really happens. She's just a part of it. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Camille and Marika. So we'll add this. We go Camille, Marika. Uh, let's see here. Camille is pleased with the win. and invites Marika to join them so she doesn't get bullied by ah again well it's a heel telling a heel that she's getting bullied but I think it works out There we go. Put that there. And let's see, 110 minutes. We've got one, two, three, sixty. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Saya. 
Uh, what's her selling look like? 65. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Saya celebrates with fans on winning her debut match as a surprise tonight. There we go. Just put that up there. Whoops. Put that right there. Uh, who should do the honors of a promo? We should have some sort of promo. Uh, that 43 charisma is not great, but I see 49. I see 51. And 45. Hmm. Is booking idol longer than Vertigo or not? I I'm trying not to make it that. It's it's it hasn't been that long. I think it's been like 40 minutes since since we ended Vertigo. It's just, it was taking a little bit longer because I didn't have anything pre-booked, so I had to actually come up with matches. <laughs> but um, I don't have to do as many angles. I think so. I'm just about done. Why are you ready to go to bed? Is that is that what you're gonna tell me? You gonna be like, hurry it up. Uh, May, Minori, Himika, and Mirai. All right. Himika, Mirai. We'll have all of them do their deal. Uh, four minutes. Uh, each main event participant you hate the booking in this game series <laughs> just TEW in general just because it takes so damn long to book everything yeah I can see if you weren't if you weren't doing it like streaming it like I would I feel like it would be so long to book a two hour show like god forbid you were trying to book like a three hour raw I think that's what really gets people like really into not doing this is you get like a three hour raw you get a two hour smackdown you get a two hour nxt well nxt i guess it's a different deal but you know you still got your main event to do it's it's ridiculous that, that one hour main event's practically just like pre just auto booker <laughs> Uh, each main event participant uh, discusses the match as they plan to challenge for the Royal Spirit title. All right. Good enough. There we go. And... Actually, I think what I'm going to do, she'll be down here again. I have I didn't do that last time, so we'll do uh, at ringside. We're going to put Mika Iwata at ringside. She is the champion. She wants to watch. There you go. So they even have main event anymore. Um... I don't oh god I don't know if they have main event since uh COVID. No, they have cuz I remember hearing about it. I remember hearing from podcasts that it was like, "Oh yeah, these people were on main event." So, yeah, I guess they do still do it. But yeah, that's usually the pre-taped that's usually the pre-show stuff like when I went to when I went to Raw uh back in December, they did a couple of main event matches. So, yeah, they still book a little bit before Raw, a little bit before SmackDown. So I imagine you would still have to do an hour-long main event every week. 
And that's on top of your three hour raw and your two hour SmackDown. At least it's a little bit better if you're doing just like impact, just like a two hour impact every week. AEW is slightly more ridiculous too, because you get two hour dynamite and then what an hour of dark. Possibly two. Uh, let's see here. Let's get uh, just a little bit there. Mika, Overness. There you go. Uh, Mika Wada comes out with the belt to watch. The match and find her next challenger there we go I did book Himika right yep all right so we do Mika Iwata Himika all right uh, Mika in the ring congrats uh, Himika as they stare down uh, before next month's title match. There you go. Three minutes at the end there. Uh, I guess uh, Charisma both, maybe. Even Overness. What's Himika's Overness at? It can't be great. Uh, I might be able to work. There we go. It's such a it's such an American way of doing things. I don't think a ton of time they do they do American ways of things like this. Really Borat. Oh no, I've seen I've seen the 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 second Borat trailer. I assume that it looks good. It looks terrible. Cuz uh, I've seen footage from like I don't even want to get into it. It looks I wasn't a big fan of the first Borat. I'm certainly not seeing the second one cuz like everyone knows who Borat is, so they have to do something different and it just <laughs> I was going to say, no, I've seen the trailer. I've seen the trailer. I've seen clips of the movie. I've, I have seen it. Trust me. I have seen what you're going to show me just for, just for shits and giggles. Yeah. I, I mean, you're not, you're not showing me anything I haven't already seen. Yeah. I've the song. Yeah. I've, I've had the song linked to me before. I, I've had the song. I've had that song linked to me before too. I've I've seen more than a, I've had I have friends who are into Borat and I I've seen and heard enough of of Borat. What was the um I know the 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 Will You Be My Wife song. I've I've heard it. I'm not I'm not trying to like you know, I'm not I'm not trying to like uh you know, push it off, but yeah, I have I have seen it. But yeah, there was uh, another guy that I think he was talking about. He was talking about um, Borat and he was like, Sasha Baron Cohen must hate Mike Myers because he was able to milk three highly successful Austin Powers movies out of a goofy character. And Borat could barely manage a second one. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing about the second movie is they really can't use him much or they got to go to like podunk America and even then people still sort of recognize him. And yeah, there was stuff he was doing for the movie that really bombed when he was doing it live. And so it was like, oh, that's not really going to make the movie or they're going to have to sweeten that. It just doesn't uh, just doesn't really work. So, yeah, either way. I think we're good. I think we're good. Now that I'm done ranting about this. All right. Idol Pro live stage eight. 112 people at Shinkiba. First ring. Starting off the show, the Bakaratsu sisters coming out. They are opening the show, greeting the fans. 
And uh, they mentioned last month that they wanted a shot at strong kickers. Well, right now, uh, Mirai Mayumi has earned a shot at the number one contendership to the Royal Spirit Championship. So they're going to have to go by the wayside for right now. But they're looking for another shot at strong kickers uh, possibly next month. And we get a three-way dance here. Nota Katenma, Makoto Shindo, and Bani Oikawa. Uh, Oikawa. Uh, Nodoka and Makoto doing quite well. But nonetheless, just under 13 minutes, Nota Katenma gets the win. Bani goes out first, and then Makoto Shindo goes down. And Nodoka getting the win here. And uh, as they celebrate, uh, Kamiyu and Mirai come out. And... Um, and uh, Camille start, starts uh, insulting them and sarcastically congratulating them and uh, puts over Mirai's match later on tonight in the main event, uh, as well as the fact that Camille, since Mirai is around, she does have a match, though, and it'll be a tag team match against a possible new member of their group and a uh, possible new friend. So we'll see uh, what comes of that. And uh, we get Raku in action against the former challenger Ram Kaicho. And uh, we get just, just under 18 and a half minutes. Raku looked like she had this match won. However, Hikari Noah came down to the ring, hit the ring, and uh, laid out a, a bit of a distraction for Raku as uh, they argued between, uh, between the ring. Uh, Raku inside the ring arguing with Hikari Noah and uh, allowed Ram Kaicho to uh, get her wits back about her, uh, pull Raku near her, uh, level her with a Rainmaker and pin her in 1827 and Ram Kaicho uh, getting the win over Raku tonight. And uh, Ram celebrates. Hikari Noah, though, grabs a kendo stick. And uh, she starts uh, kind of uh, beating on uh, Raku with the kendo stick. Not like super fast, but uh, definitely lands at least a good six or seven shots in before uh, security for the event uh, hits the ring and starts uh, kind of getting in her way. Hikari starts arguing with security, but uh, takes the stick uh, puts the stick down and climbs out of the ring as uh, they tend to Raku. As uh, Hikari did manage, seemed to have managed to uh, get her her point across. Let's see here, Haku, no, <laughs> Raku. Uh, let's see here. And oh, come on, next segment. There we go. All right, so it is time Yuki Kamifuku and Marika Kobashi, who she's now teaming with, at least tonight, uh, taking on Haruna Neko and Rin Katakura. And uh, Haruna seems a little bit distracted by the, the entire time and uh, walks out on Rin as, um, as uh, let's see here, I believe, yeah, Kamiyu ends up getting a handful of tights on Rin and rolls her up for the victory. And Haruna Neko and Rin Katakura showed excellent chemistry. Well, that's pretty good. Let's see here. Uh, Marika, once again, the lowest on the totem pole. However, Haruna and Rin Katakura are still not the best. Either Kamiyu, uh being the best wrestler in this ring really shows... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it shows her skill level or the skill level of the people around her, but I think it's more the skill level of the people around her. <laughs> and uh, Camille grabs a mic. She's pleased for the victory. She's pleased that uh, this team up uh, was so successful today and uh, invites Marika Kobashi to join them. As uh, she references the the, uh, the 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 bullying that Marika has suffered at the hands of people like Himika and uh, and Mirai and just uh, some of the some of the bigger meaner girls around here, and uh, you know people people seem to be reacting like they just don't quite buy that. But uh, 
So the bully is talking about bu- getting bullied, but nonetheless, uh, Marika Marika seems to be shedding a tear and is happy to to have people to to help deal with uh, the trauma that she has had to deal with thus far in Idol Fight Project, as uh, she is happy to join uh, Mirai and Camille and uh, form an alliance with them. And we get a surprise debut. Miyako Matsumoto came out, and we have a surprise debut fresh away from uh, uh, just literally, I would say, a week or so after uh, walking out of stardom uh, in anger. Saya Kamitani uh, ends up uh, making her debut here in Idol Pro. And uh, she faces Miyako Matsumoto. Uh, let's see here, decent, decent little match here. Uh, twenty-seven minutes isn't, or twenty-seven really isn't great at this point. That's definitely a lower tier. But nonetheless, it went seventeen minutes. Saya shows off her uh, running shooting star press that she has developed over the last several months. Well, at least it's over a year now, at least in game. Uh, so she she shows off her running shooting star press on Miyako. I guess, oh man, I think I need to add the Phoenix Splash too, considering she just pulled that out recently in real life. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, uh, maybe not the most impressive showing from Saya, but uh, I do see uh, a lot of potential in her. And I am very happy to see that she that she had walked. We had gotten another... We had gotten another walkout from stardom and this time it was someone who was uh, a lot a lot more um a, a lot more um uh what is it uh affordable so far than uh, say momo trust me momo will probably will almost certainly show up uh at some point relatively soon but now's not the time because saya is much cheaper <laughs> And uh, she celebrates with the fans. She uh, goes around the ring, high fives everybody. And uh, she seems very excited to win her debut match as a, uh, as a surprise, uh, as a surprise competitor today. There you go. And we get all four of the main event participants going on for just about a minute about, uh, about uh, what this uh, match means to them, how they plan to beat the other three competitors, and uh, plan to challenge for the Royal Spirit Championship. We have a four corner. Sur- oh, hang on. First, first for this uh, main event, the four corner survival match to uh, determine the number one contender to Mika Awada's Royal Spirit Championship. We get the champion Mika Awada coming out, uh, fresh off of just a couple months ago. Her uh, Successful title defense against Ram Kaicho in a bit of a brutal match. She comes out here to watch the match and and uh, scout her next challenger. And so we get the main event of the uh, uh, main event of the evening. And uh, looks like Hanori Hana was first, and uh, May Saruga was second. Came down to the big hosses, the two Joshi hosses of uh, the promotion, Himika Arita and Mirai Mayumi and uh, suplexing each other around but it was in 1920 fantastic heat and great wrestling Himika Arita gets the win and wins the four corner survival match and she will be challenging Mika Awada for the Royal Spirit Championship next month all right and there we go you say you won't sign Momo. That's a lie. You will and bankrupt yourself. No, no, no. I said I won't sign her right now. Right now, she's too expensive. In a few months, though, she won't be. And that's when I can sign her. <laughs> we just got to I just got to be patient for me to get some money. I will not I, I will not bankrupt myself. I'll probably come close, but still. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Mika Awada climbs into the ring with uh, the Royal Spirit Championship. She shakes hands with uh, Himika as uh, Himika pulls her in and they stare each other down uh, in, in a moment there. 
heading into next month's title match. There you go. So we got our main event for next month in February for uh, Idol Pro Live Stage 9. Mika Iwata defending the Royal Spirit Championship against Himika Arita. There you go. Uh, let's see here. What is with the constant? I just, with the constant need to sign, sign this person, sign this person. Holy Jesus. Uh, oh God, not a lot of people shining through on this. Holy shit. Uh, Himika shine through. Um, Ram Kaicho did well to carry Raku. And, you know, I'll give it to Kamiyu for not, for keeping that, that, uh, tag match from being a disaster. Scene, please, scene, please, scene, please. There you go. What's after this? I don't know if anything's after this, honestly. I've been, I've been, I've been spending my time on, uh, I've spent like 20 hours on NASCAR Heat 5. I, I wouldn't mind doing a, uh, um, career mode of that because I seem to be at that perfect level, that perfect uh, skill level of not being really good enough to win a lot of races, but maybe that would be interesting to actually see someone eventually uh, eventually uh, work their way up into being half decent. Bryce Benjamin. I remember Bryce Benjamin. He was in Ring of Honor for a minute. Can we stay on stream? I'm not really planning on it. <laughs> I don't I don't need to see a lot more videos. It's not going to work out very well. Oh, poor just incredible. Orange Cassidy. He deleted his his account. So something must have happened for him. Must have had uh let's see here. Involved in a social media storm after being accused of bullying a young fan. I don't think Orange Cassie would actually do that, but whatever. There we go. But then again, you you never know with some people. Hey, we get Saya again. I've also been still working on uh my Hornets mod for NASCAR racing two thousand three. Because I have an idea of doing like a custom season with the Hornets. But that's going to be an offline thing if I do it. Because I want to do some actual like graphic work for it and everything. Make it feel nice. And it'd probably be a lot easier than if I tried to schedule it for a stream. I could actually do some more stuff. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Page wins new fans online. Oh boy, now I'm sad. <laughs> He's in to look forward to enjoying the business from a different perspective. Now I'm sad. Oh, Shota came back. Oh damn, Akira Tozawa was staying with the WWE. <laughs> I I for one would have been happy to try to pull. There's no way at this point in my in my uh in my promotion, I could pull Akira Tozawa away from the WWE. <sighs> oh my God. I'm going to click one link. Let's see here. <sighs> All right. Yep. You got your swing and you missed. There you go. That's it. <laughs> I don't care what you show me anymore. Sami Zayn fully fit. All right. Nothing going on there. Bring back racist Akira gimmick. You know what's kind of funny? <laughs> what's what's kind of funny is I I gave a gimmick where where uh, Akira Tozawa is a racist, and then WWE does an actual gimmick where it's just racist towards Akira Tozawa. I really, I really don't like this. Oh, God. 
I just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, there's too many swings and misses going on right now. People are just getting the, the, the level of the level of just people spurging out is just, it's too much for me. You can't spend two hours spurging out in my chat and then being like, yo, this is good. This is what I think is funny. It's like, oh, no. Is it going to be? Jordan Grace is pregnant. Uh, Randy Rain. Hey, he used to work for Noah. I wonder how good he is. I wonder if it even shows that he was in a tag team. Yeah, it did. It did. Shows that him and Cody Hall were in a tag team. I don't think. I, I bet you they probably. It probably doesn't show. Well, yeah, he doesn't have any relationships. <coughs> there we go. You're peak comedy. Fuck. No, you're not. <sighs> the fuck do you think <laughs> all right anything else big anything else big mm, da, 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 nothing all right looks like we're just getting straight to february then we get to find out who won the royal rumble see what we got see how much money we got too that'll be interesting to see all right let's save this real quick arn anderson's gonna be leaving the wrestling industry soon the undertaker will soon be out of his way his way out of the wwe diamond dallas page is leaving the business Roman Reigns has won the 2021 Royal Rumble. Uh, Impact is looking to re-sign Rob Van Dam also. <laughs> kind of funny considering it's not. That's not exactly what happened. Uh, let's see. Natty Narher wins. Tsuyoshi no staying with Dragon Gate. Uh, Dolph Ziggler lost the Intercontinental title to Sami Zayn. Charlotte Flair won the Women's Royal Rumble. Akira Tozawa is the United States champion. Wow. I guess they were just waiting for him to re-sign. Grand Metalik will probably re-sign. Uh, Fandango will be leaving WWE. Interesting. Kalisto to possibly stay with WWE. Dude, if Kalisto left, that'd be pretty good. Chris Brooks is injured. It's just a few days. Just out of curiosity, how much for Fandango? That's not a lot. That's uh, that's about as much as I'd be paying. I'm paying for Heath Miller. It's uh, yeah. That's not that's not that's not a lot. That is not a lot considering, even after giving a thousand dollars. We only lost two hundred, and it's after giving a thousand dollars to Idol Fight Project. So we lost a little bit of money, but that's after we gave a bunch of money to a bunch of money to them. Might have to consider that. Might have to consider that. Speaking of Idol Pro, how much money? All right, so they made six fifty nine, which means they only lost about what three fifty. That's I mean that's doing better. The cost of the workers is only 20 bucks more than usual, so we've done well. Made a little bit more money on sponsors. Where are we at with that? $14.50. We're almost to the point we can kind of cover it with that, and then ticket sales will help with the rest of it. Merchandise is doing okay. We're gonna make we're gonna make money eventually. We're gonna get our we're gonna get our money eventually. We're almost there. Well, there you go. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. It's just about midnight. Probably wind down my day or do something else that doesn't involve being here. Uh, but I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, 
If you're watching this on uh, on YouTube, I want to thank you for continuing to watch as well. Uh, even though we we had less people show up for our big uh, our big show, I mean at least we have a little bit of something. So you know what? I'll I'll take it. You know. Oh, you know why? Oh God, I just remembered why. Is because I still have the ticket pricing as default, not very cheap. Oh, that's why. That's the difference. I see now. If I set the tickets to very cheap, more people would have shown up. So that's how many people showed up default wise. And let me see here. We gained 400 off that. We gained 260 or so off tickets. And we only gained. See, we only gained like an extra $100 on sponsors. Fuck. It's not what I wanted to do. We probably could have gained a lot more off popularity by having a, a very cheap uh very cheap tickets. That's why it didn't show up. Damn it. Uh, that explains a lot now, but that's all right. I'll just have to deal with the little minor mistakes. I don't think it's going to affect me too much. Like I said, I after giving away a thousand dollars, I still only lost two hundred and nine, which means I'm I made like almost eight hundred. So, uh, not quite what I wanted, but that's all right. I'll deal with it. I'll be fine, I guess. So, thank you guys for coming out. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for continuing to watch. I greatly appreciate it. I hope to uh, see you continuously watching. Ah, oh, see, it's not even at a seven like this is, but that's all right. Once again, we're we're making money. I'm, I shouldn't complain too much. So thank you, and I will see you guys next time.